Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, I will be demonstrating the Simpsons 1 third tool. And uh, actually, I will be demonstrating the C++ program to implement the Simpsons 1 third rule for calculating or evaluating the definite integral of various functions. So let's get to it. Okay, so if you check out the Wikipedia page of Simpsons rule, then you can find that um, in contrast to the trapezoidal rule, the Simpson rule aims at approximating the function which is f of x denoted by the blue line and what your Simpson rule you know is based on is that it tries to approximate it, this function using a quadratic or a second degree polynomial that would be your p of x denoted by the red line and if you have a closer look at this you know awesome animation right down here if um, you can see that if blue line is your f of x and you keep on increase and you uh, try to approximate it using these red polynomials those are quadratic polynomials or you can say parabolas in fact and as you keep on increasing those number of parabolas then you have got you, yourself you know a pretty good approximation of the function and all you need to do to find out the definite integral is that you need to find out the area under each of the parabola that you are creating and the more number of parabolas or you know these polynomials you have the better is your approximation okay so let's now find out the formula to apply this rule if you just scroll down in the Wikipedia page you can find this amazing formula for your Simpson rule and what it does uh, in a sense is that it multiplies or um, actually you should if you are watching this uh, let me just you know mention this right now if you are watching this video I would recommend that you have watched the trapezoidal rule video first and because it is uh, essential for you to understand this video in a better way and I, I am skipping some things that I mentioned in that video so I would suggest that you go on and watch the my video on trapezoidal rule anyways so what you do is you divide the function into n um, sub intervals and uh, starting from a which is your initial limit okay so okay one uh, here is exactly what I'm saying you divide this function to n sub intervals and starting from a to b which is your final limit and make sure yeah this is pretty much very important and you have to make sure that this n is even that you are using right here because um, this rule was uh, approximate sub function using quadratic polynomials and I would like you to find out and study why this condition is imposed okay so Remember this sub number of sub intervals should be even and then you will have n plus 1 points. Okay, so what I mean by n plus 1 points is also explained in my previous video on trigonal rule. Because if you are dividing any curve in, uh, in n sub intervals then you end up with n plus 1 points for that curve. Um, I hope you understand what I am saying. I am not sure if I am very uh, good at explaining that. Anyways. Um, let's um, now skip to this formula so you will get the formula as h by 3 where h is your uh, you know width of the interval say you divide b uh, a to b in n intervals and the width of the interval will be given by the ma magnitude of a minus b divided by n that is the difference between these limit divided by n right here so that would be your h and f of x0 where x0 is your initial limit f of xn where xn is your final limit b x1 x2 x3 can be evaluated and one more thing to remember while observing this formula is that you are multiplying the terms with odd um, x1 like uh, for example x1 x3 these are being multiplied by 4 and the terms with even uh, I am um, uh, you know position like x2 x4 and x6 and so on are being multiplied by 2 
so that is an important observation right here now we will implement this in a C++ program right here which I have uh, opened in okay opened in my uh, virtual box anyways so here is the function where you will define your function whose definite interval you have to calculate in this case we will be calculating the definite integral of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared then you ask the user about the limits of integration the initial limit a the final limit b and the number of sub intervals and mention that in the code that the user should enter an even number of sub intervals otherwise the program just goes nuts it's insane and declare two arrays to store x and y where y is your f of x essentially and then you will be calculating h which would, which would be b minus a divided by n and I should rather use absolute values here and but it would still work because usually we apply definite integrals um, from lower limit to a higher limit and therefore b minus a would always be positive and if I am going to use ABS then make sure that you use the C math library right here so let me just remove it for a moment and you can use it in your code and just write a minus b b minus a whatever you don't have to worry about that anyways then you will calculate x0 x1 where x0 as you can see at 0 iteration of i um, i would be 0 therefore x0 would be a then x1 would be a plus h x2 would be a plus 2h x3 would be a plus 3h and so on then you will calculate y, y of you know y you will be calculating y0 y1 y2 as you can see in this formula we need all these values we need um where it go okay so here it is so what we need is we need f of x0 we need f of x1 therefore we calculated x0 x1 x2 so on and now we are we are calculating f of x1 x of x0 x2 and so on that's what is going on with this code right here now what you're going to do is you are going to run a loop where you will be multiplying as you can see the terms with uh, oh, I'm sorry I I guess I opened the Simpsons 38 rule right here and make sure that you don't make the same mistake what we are doing in this video is Simpsons one third rule and not the 38 rule I must have scrolled down more than I intended to okay so as you can see we need to multiply the uh, odd position um, values of f of x by 4 so what that's what is going on here I start a loop from 1 to, and increment it by 2 regularly and and I'm getting um, the sum is getting equal to 4 times of f of x1 then plus 4 times of f of x3 and so on then what I'm doing in this loop right here is I'm multiplying the e even position of the uh, even positional f of x values by 2 and adding them all up so since the variable is same after running these two loops what I will have with me is I will have 4 times of f of x1 plus 2 twice of f of x2 plus 4 times of f of x3 plus twice of f of x4 so on up to 4 times of f of x and minus 1 so I have calculated values from this point up till this point now all I need to do is calculate this final value which is pretty easy as I do right here h by 3 multiplied by y0 that is f of f, f of x0 plus f of xn and the sum that I have already calculated and voila you will have your integral right here so let's run the program for f of x is equal to 1 by 1 plus x squared let's see what we get right here so let me just clear my terminal now I'm running this program and actually I compiled it right there now I'm running it and let's enter the limits as 0 initial limit 0 final limit 6 and the number of intervals say 6 and you get the answer as 1.3662 which is not very accurate but it is approximately nearer to the actual value and let's see what if we 
increase the number of iterations say to 20 not 21 because that is odd I will need to enter even value 32 and this answer that you are seeing right here is absolutely correct you can use any calculator and get the same answer right here so if the program really works now let's find integrals for some other values say f of 1 plus x squared I'm sorry that was square root of f of 1 plus x squared so let's compile it then run it from 0 or scratch that I will like to clear my screen first and then run the program from 1 to 5 and number of intervals say 8 and I have 12.7561 which I don't know if it is absolutely correct or not because I haven't evaluated the actual integral by myself but it should be somewhere near to it as this met these methods are not you know very accurate you need to increase these number of iterations as I mentioned earlier by showing you the animation from Wikipedia so but these numerical methods are very useful and you know in ma various fields in many many fields and because you are using computer you don't need to worry about the number you can just type in hundred and thousand for that matter or even million if you have a super powerful computer anyways so and one more thing that I would like to tell you and please make sure that you listen to it and keep it in mind since the Simpson rule approximates the function using a quadratic polynomial it should always return the correct answer for any quadratic polynomial say I my f of x is equal to x squared which is a parabola or a quadratic polynomial therefore even if I only use two iterations and which it which is basically the minimum number of iterations that I could have you know used then also I should get the correct answer and 9 as you can see x squared in uh, the integration of x squared is 3 I'm sorry that would be x cubed divided by 3 and if you place 3 in place of x cubed then you would get 27 divided by 3 is 9 which is absolutely the correct answer that you got and you got this with only two uh, you know sub intervals and which is because the Simpson's rule approximates the function using um, quadratic polynomial itself and therefore you should get absolutely correct answer for minimum number of iterations or you know uh, number of sub intervals so that you should keep in mind while uh, you know just as a note and important info now I hope I was able to convey something to you and you learned something useful from this video I hope that I help you in some way or any way possible for that matter if you like the video or learned anything useful from it don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to me if you like these kind of numerical methods or numerical analysis videos or any programming videos I'll be posting a bunch of those and you can check out my other video videos too and in case you want the code for this program it is attached in the description below also what you can do is you can check out my website called bragitoff.com and you can just enter a search term there whatever you need to find out about um, uh, numerical analysis I have posted a bunch of programs over there and also what you can do is and if you have any questions or reviews or any suggestions or any confusion or doubt or if I made some mistake in the video don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section below and that's all see you in the next video bye bye